everybody, JC here with another TNI toy review. And for today's review, we're going to take a look at the new DC Collectible 7 inch scale Aero TV series Deathstroke figure. And the figure comes packaged in the same style of packaging we saw with those other figures. You've got the white and green borders, you've got the window packaging with the figure clearly displayed, and then you've got the Aero logo down below. On one side we have an image of the Destro character from the TV show and then on the back of the packaging we have the Arrow logo, uh, all four uh, single package figures shown and then uh, the CW logo and the DC Comics logo and it tells us that the figures are sculpted by Gentle Giant Studios. And the fourth figure is Arrow um, in, in the more recent uh, TV seasons with, with the actual mask as opposed to the, the grease painted on his face. And he's also got the compound bow. That, that figure is yet to be released. Okay, so let's get this figure open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figure outside of the packaging. And I've got to tell you, I think DC Collectibles hit this one out of the park. This might truly be the nicest Deathstroke figure that they've done to date. And that's not that's saying a lot, being as that uh, the previous Arkham um, Origins version won our figure of the year last year. Um, and I think is a top-notch figure, but I actually think that this new uh, Deathstroke figure is a little bit nicer than that one. Um, just the details, the articulation, the joints are strong on it. Um, you know, this is it's about as close to a perfect figure that you can get. Um, there are f maybe a few minor problems with it, but you know, this is really just a top-notch looking figure. Uh, with lots of nice articulation and, and again the joints um, I've had no issues with the joints um, they don't have the clear joints and we'll go over that in just a bit but just the detail so like I really like the detail on the mask I mean this looks like something that if somebody was going to dress like this in real life is what they would be wearing um, you know it's it's almost like he's got um, uh, you know SWAT gear um, just the padding, uh, the detail on the padding uh, with the sculpting and the metallic paints for the blue um, just come off looking really nice. He's got uh, the belt buckles and everything again just look top notch and then the armor um, underneath the, all of that that he's wearing uh, looks just really good. Um, he's got these gold gas grenades on this belt that's an actual separate piece from the figure. Um, so that's really nice looking. The belt itself, uh, the strap around his chest isn't really meant to be removed, I don't think, but, but it is a separate piece from the figure. And he's got the sheath on the back uh, for his sword, um, but again, just on the back of the figure, just lots of nice detailing um, with the padding and the armor, um, the wrinkles in the pants, um, and down here on his shins, the padding on his shins, and I really like the orange and, and blue metallic paints that they've used on this figure. And then even like on his boots, he's got these like little gold uh, metallic paint um, for the rims of his shoes and everything. Um, he's got he's got a, a gun belt or he's got a holster on one leg and that's a it's made with a rubber type material. It's glued to the side and then it's got a strap that actually um, he's got this belt around his waist and it's got like this strap that goes down to the gun belt but it's not actually attached to the gun belt um, it, so it, it doesn't prohibit the movement um, of the leg which I like. We kind of saw this same kind of design with like uh, the Marvel Legends Black Widow uh, figure from the Captain America Winter Soldier line but these are done instead with hard plastic these are done with soft uh, type rubber material and it's the same thing over here. Got the little strap that goes down from his waist down to these little pouches on his leg, which again, the pouches are glued to the leg, um, but the strap is not actually connected, so it doesn't limit the movement of the leg. Um, again, just deep, I love the detail, like the belts, the little belt clips and everything. I mean, they look so realistic. And then on the mask, the detail on the mask itself is really nice as well on both sides, the orange and the black side. Um, I like on the black side, you know, he does, it's all covered so you can't see his eye and everything. But I like how you can still see like the straps um, sculpted on the side there. And you can see kind of like his eye uh, patch underneath the mask. 
So, you know, again, even though it's just all solid black, they still managed to get some really nice detail with that mask. And then on the orange side, you can see his eye and it, it looks really good. Um, really has that kind of evil look to it. So, you know, overall, you know, I just, you know, I can't keep gushing over the details on this figure. He's got the little tassels that stick out the back. He's got more of those orange belt buckles on the back. He's got a sheath back here with a little dagger that's removable. That looks really good. He's also got a sheath down here on his uh, one boot, which has a removable uh, knife. And then he's, of course, got his uh, traditional sh sword with the removable, you know, with the sheath with the removable sword. And then he's got the pistol. And again, that's removable. So if I had to nitpick this figure at all, I would say uh, my one little area um, is how he holds his weapon. So he can hold the gun in his um, right hand, but he doesn't really have a trigger finger. So you can kind of put it in the hand, but I think it would look better in his hand if he had like a trigger finger that would fit through the trigger. So again, that's a very minor complaint, but but you know, like I said, if I had to find something to nitpick about the figure, that that would be it. And then the other thing is, um, like he holds the gun in that hand very good. He couldn't, he can't hold the gun because um, in the um, left hand because the opening is too small, and then the plastic on the hands are very hard plastic. So you might be able to heat it up and loosen that up a little bit, but. Um, for the most part, it's basically he's made to hold the gun in his right hand. And the sword you can get in either hand. Um, if you want to get in the right hand, you have to kind of pry it through his fingers because, again, the opening on that hand is too wide, so it'll drop the sword if, if you're not careful. But you can kind of pry it through his fingers if you want to get him to hold, hold it in that hand. So... Um, for his sword and his daggers, it's better to put it in his left hand. Though the opening, again, you can't get the sword hilt all the way down into his hand because the opening is too small. So it looks a little bit funny, you know, holding it, the sword in that hand. But it, again, not anything too major. And the detail on the accessories are pretty nice. You know, you've got the metallic uh, silver on the blade and the little grips on the handle. So I think that looks good. And then for the gun, again, gun metallic and then the black handle. Um, so really nice detailing on the accessories. He's got the larger dagger that fits on his boot uh, sheath. And that is a darker metallic for the blade and then black with the black wraps around the handle. So that one looks good. And that one, again, you can either, if you want to put it in the right hand you kind of have to uh, put it between his fingers or um, you can kind of get it in the hole on his left hand though this one doesn't really fit that well because the handle is a little bit too big so you can kind of get it in there but again he doesn't really you can't get it the handle all the way down there so it looks a little funny when you're holding it in the um, left hand and then finally, he's got the little dagger that fits in the sheath in the back. Again, that's a darker uh, metallic for the blade and just a black handle. And that one he can get um, the best hand for that one is, is the left hand. So the figure stands just right under 7 inches tall. He's basically the same height as the other figures in this line. So here he is next to that first Deathstroke figure. And you can see they're about the same height. But just looking at these two together, just again, the overall detail on this new figure is just so much better than on this older figure. And this old figure, you know, this first Deathstroke figure wasn't a bad looking figure, but the detail on this new one is just so much uh, nicer. And then here he is next to that Arrow figure from the box set um, from the first season. And again, they're about the same height. Maybe Arrow with his hood is a little bit taller, but for the most part, they're about the same height. And then here it is next to the Canary figure. And again, she's maybe a little bit shorter than, than he is, but, but they're pretty close in height. But I would say overall, the scale is pretty good uh, with this line. So articulation on this figure is really nice. Uh, DC Collectibles has kind of gone all out on the articulation on this one. Uh, the head's on a ball joint, um, so he's got, he's got left and right movements with the head. 
and he's got a little bit of up and down movement, more down than up, but not a whole lot, basically because of the way the helmet's sculpted. The arms are attached at the shoulders with your standard ball hinge joints. However, the way the armor is sculpted, you can't really get his arm all the way out. That's about as much out as you can get. But he does have good rotation there at the arm. Um, he has a swivel at the elbow and then a single hinged elbow so he can bend his elbow about that much. No bicep swivel. And then he does have the hinges and the swivel at the wrist as well. So he's got the swivel and then he's got up and down, more down movement than up but he does have you know, pretty good up and down movement there at the wrist. He does have a midsection joint, so he's got rotation there at the midsection. And again, I like how he's got these little belt straps that go from his belt up, you know, up into his chest, but they're not actually attached to the, um, to the armor pieces, so it doesn't limit the movement of the figure at all. So you've got good rotation there. Not much in the way of ab crunch itself though, because again, of the armor. Um, you can get the leg forward about that much and you can get the leg back about that much and again because the straps aren't attached it doesn't really limit the movement and then he can do the splits um, pretty good. Now I don't know how well this will show up on camera but I just want to point out with the joints that they um, they're not those clear plastic joints like we've seen with previous figures. Um, they're black, um, they're painted black, and they seem to be very strong and sturdy. Um, my legs have remained tight and uh, no indication that easily could break off while I have him doing the splits or, or moving his legs around or anything. So it definitely seems, at least on this figure, that, that the joint breakage is not going to be an issue. And for the knees, you've got double jointed knees, um, so he's got good bending at the knees, and I like how they've hidden the joints for the knees with the, the padding on the boots, so that ends up looking really good. Um, and then he does have ankle pivots, so he's got good movement at the ankles, and then two peg holes on the bottom of his feet. So that's my review. Overall, I think this is a fantastic looking figure. Lots of uh, good articulation, good sturdy joints, so breakage really doesn't seem like it's going to be an issue with this figure, which I'm really glad to see. Um, and again, just the detail on this figure I think is incredible. Um, everything from like the little bullets on his shoulders and, and the gas grenades and everything, it's just, you know, I love the look at this figure. And I, I, I think this is really one of, uh, if not the best, looking Deathstroke figure that any company has done. Um, and not only does it look good, but it's got good posability, nice accessories and everything. So, you know, even if you're not a fan of the Arrow TV series, I think this is maybe a figure that you'd want to look into possibly adding to your collection if you're a fan of Deathstroke in general. This figure is hitting comic and specialty shops now, so if you want to add it to your collection, start checking stores now. It'll probably cost you around $25, which isn't too bad of a price for the detail and everything that you get with this figure. And that's my review. You know, as always, we ask please leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Um, if you're so inclined, please like the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. And until next time, I'll catch you later.